In this video today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through how to customize the Numenera system in Foundry VTT. So let's get started in three, two, one, go. Welcome to RPG Elite, where we put the RP back into RPG, giving you tools and tips on how to make your RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. And hey, if you want to get in on what exactly this channel is about, there's a video right here. Go here, click on this video. This will pause. It's not going anywhere. And then come back and join the fun. Now, for those of you who are returning, some of you may be fellow leets. What's up? What is up? And I'm making this video because I'd asked in the comments in my last video if anyone wanted me to make this video. And I got a couple people, literally, who said they wanted to make this video. And so I am here to fulfill your whims. And all you have to do to help me out is smash that like button. Crush it, y'all. Crush it till you just can't do it no more. And then if you really like this stuff, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon. So every time that I come out with something, you'll be notified. I try to come out with something once a week. Sometimes that might be twice a week, but at least, in the very least, once per week. All right, today we're going to get a little geeky. Not that we can get too much more geeky. I mean, right? I mean, come on, folks. We play role playing games. You can't get much more geekier than that. <laughs> so we're going to get a little geeky. But the geekiness that we're going to focus on today is going to be more in the tech geek mode. And it's not going to be all that serious, right? This is really simple stuff. And once you see how to do it, you'll be like, oh my goodness. I mean, this was really simple. Then you'll want to do some more things. Now we're just going to focus on three things today. And it's those three things that I talked about in my last video. Now, again, if you haven't gone back and seen my last video right here, I'm hoping my finger is pointing in the right place and go back and look at the last video, then come back here because there are other things that you can do besides the three things that we're going to be doing today. But we're only going to be focused on three things. And these are the three things I talked about that I feel are necessities more for consistency to be with the core book and just for quality of life so we can see. And so I'm going to teach you how to do those three things today. Now, what are those three things? The three things are going to be changing the label for Numenera from ciphers to actually Numenera, changing the label of other enhancements to actually assets, and also changing the font color in ciphers so we can actually see, because that is like horrendous to try to read that stuff with white text. So we're going to go ahead and change all of those. Now, like I said, there are other things you can do. Like on my sheet that you saw the last time, you saw that how I changed all the different dice and the colors of the dice just to give it a little bit of flavor, just cosmetic things, right? But there's other things that you could do, right? You could change the font of the labels themselves so they don't have to be just, just kind of like the plain font, but you can change it to some decorative font if you wanted to change it like that, something close to the spirit of the game. And so you can do a couple things, more than a couple things. You change the color of the sheet. Uh, you can add some other things, but we're not going to do that today. Uh, that's going to make the video way long, and we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to just do those three things, and then we'll come back to doing the more custom cosmetic things to really bring that Numenera system character sheet and make it individual and yours. Now, this video is for GMs mostly, right? Uh, you are the guys who are going to be doing the nuts and bolts of things, but it can be for players as well. If you really want to help your GM out and really do something cool, then this is something that you could do for them. So it's all good, y'all. 
it is all good in the hood. We all working together to have a lot of fun so we can have a more immersive and enjoyable RPG experience. Capiche Coolio. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get off here. I'm gonna go over to my computer and you're gonna hear my disembodied voice and we are gonna talk through all of these things so you can customize the Numenera system for Foundry VTT for your campaign session. So let's get ready to do this. I love doing this right here. And here we go. Okay, so here we are in my computer and we're gonna go through this step by step. Now, I like to talk at a normal pace. I'm not trying to kind of speedy Gonzalez through this stuff. So if you're not patient enough with someone who talks like normally, and you're used to all these cats who talk at a million miles a minute, I'm not the guy. So I also like to go thoroughly through things. So I like details. I'm, I'm a detail guy, I, so I like to go thoroughly through things. So that being the case, we're gonna take this at a moderate pace. We're not gonna go too slow, but we'll take it at a moderate pace and make sure that you know everything that you need to know. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna have to go download a program called Visual Studio Code. Now, the link is in the description below and you can go straight there and download it. Now, you're gonna see that the button for the download is right here. And when you click on the arrow, you're gonna find that it has three different operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux. Now, as you can see, there are 64-bit systems. Now, if you do not have a 64-bit system, only have a 32-bit system or something else, you can always go down here where it says other downloads and click on that and what happens is that it takes you down to the links where you can do either a 32-bit or ARM or whatever you need in particular for your particular operating system. So that's your first step is to go ahead download Visual Studio Code because this is something that you're going to need. It's just going to make your life simple when doing this. If you don't want to use it later on, you can always go and uninstall it. But I have a feeling you're going to want to keep it just to do this kind of light editing in any kind of files in Foundry VTT. I'm not talking about the system, not Foundry itself. I'm talking about uh any systems that you have and you want to go in and you want to do some tweaking with them, Visual Studio Code is going to help you out. It's very popular. A lot of coders use it. Okay. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is fire up your Foundry VTT and fire up Numenera within it. Now, I've already got all that set and ready to go. Now, as you do it on your end, let me just say this real quick. You may want to back up any files that you edit. Okay, maybe. Now, this stuff is so easy that doing it again, it'll take you literally seconds. You know, it'll take you less than two minutes to do all of this. However, if you start doing some of the other things like changing the dice, changing the font, then it might take a little bit longer and you might not want to go through all of that. So, if at the end of this, you want to go ahead and back up the files that you edited, then it's going to make it easier for when you upgrade the system. Now, this system that I'm currently working in is still 1.4.4. That's what I'm working in. Now, these basic things may already be done because I have a direct connection with the developer, at least online. And he is real good and being responsive to things where he can get to it because, you know, folks, people got to live. And I have a feeling that he may have gone ahead and changed these things. But if he did not in the iterations that are newer, then this is how you can go and do it. And even if he has, 
you're still going to want to go and at least look at the next video in this series because I'm going to teach you how to do some other things to really customize it. But let's go ahead and let's fix some of these things. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to fix this right here. Now, I went ahead and I changed the sheet back to what it was before so you guys can see the changes in real time. So this right here says ciphers, right? And this is the first thing we're going to change. So the first thing you're going to need to do before we go and change that is we're going to need to go into Visual Studio. So once you have Visual Studio downloaded, fire it up. And this is what you'll probably see. Now, in order to change that label, let's go and open up the file that we need. So I'll just click on file up here. Click on open file. And I'm going to take this back because this is probably going to be pretty important for you to understand. There are two folders for Foundry. One is the program folder and the other is the data folder. Now, I've renamed mine so I know the difference. But the data folder is the folder that we want because that is where the files that we want are located. So for me, I'll just go to my data folder and this is what you want to see when you go to your folder. You want to see these three folders here, the config, the data and the logs. That is the data folder. You're going to double click on data and then you're going to go down to systems. And then, of course, you're going to click on Numenera. And then we're going to click on templates. And now we're going to click on actor. And the last one is the character sheet. So let's go ahead and double click on that. And there it is. All the code, the lovely code that he has pulled up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change that label. Very, very simple. What we want is we want sheet tab navigation. Now, the reason why I scrolled up is to get you to see how this works. This will probably pull up like this when you first open it. It's because I've been working in it, which is the reason why it pulled up where I wanted it to go. But just let me show you how this works and how easy it is. So we want to go to sheet tab navigation. But we don't want to just go through and try to find it with our eyes. So let's go ahead and go to search right here. Click on that and then put in sheet tab as I've done here. But I'm just going to go back and put in that B and watch what happens. There you go. So right down here, it says sheet tab navigation. And that's where we want to go. And all you need to do is going to change into a little hand right there. And you just click on it and it'll bounce down exactly where we want to go which is right around here. Okay. Now, as we are doing this and you know, I, you know, I guess I could, eh, and that's all right. We're just going to keep it right there. I'm just going to keep it a little bit more centralized right there for you. Okay. So this is where we're going to be working in. And this is very simple. Now, as you can see here, you can see all of the labels for the tags are in red and they're at the very end over here right now some of these things we do not have and it's because what solar bear did is he made this for actually two systems the strange and for numenera okay uh, which is all same company right so he just made it for that and so it's a lot simpler just to do it like this and so what he did however, is he went and named Numenera ciphers. You can see it right here. Huh? Now, it's very weird because all of this information that's in between these two quotes right here is calling to something for the label. But what we can do is override that and just put in a word. Like right here, it's calling for something in the PC actor sheet to call it ciphers. And so it calls it labels it ciphers. But this is what we're going to do. I want you to go ahead and highlight this. All right? Very simple. I want you to delete it. Then I just want you to put in one word. Never guess what that word is. Numenera. All right? Now, you want to save this. 
and you can either go up here to save it right you can either push save or i usually do control s but i'm just i'm just being nice to you guys right now okay and now what we want to do is want to go back to foundry right still says ciphers so in order for us to double check this we want to press f5 anytime that we do something inside of visual studio we make any changes or anything and we want to see them in foundry just push f5 it's going to refresh foundry with those new changes so let's do that right now all right so we're going to go back to the characters oops going wrong one there we go and we're going to click and there you have it Numenera and all you have to do is click on that and it goes right where we want it to go see how easy that was two seconds two seconds all right well the next one that we want to go and edit and we have to go back to our visual studio so just go ahead and click on that so the next one we want to go edit is we want to edit that other enhancements let me go back we want to edit other enhancements when I pull up this box You'll see it says other enhancements. Well, let's keep it consistent and name it assets because that's actually what it is. So let's go back to our Visual Studio. And now what I am going to do is I'm gonna open up another file. All right, there we go. Now we're already where we need to be. We're gonna click on this folder called partials. Oops, I think this is the wrong one. Yep, we're gonna go back, go back, go back. Sorry, don't click on partials, go back because what we're going to click on is dialogue sorry about that it's dialogue and the one that we're going to edit is going to be effort so this one right here do a double click and it's going to pull this up okay now this pulls up to the place where we need it because i've been messing with this right but the same thing that you would do from before to try to find where to change assets. If I were to scroll up like this, I'm like, okay, I need to change the label to assets. So you would do this, go up here, instead of sheet tab, we're gonna put in assets, right? We're gonna go, hmm, got a couple places here. Let's click on the first one. And they're both in the same line and that's exactly where we need to go because the actual name and label is right here where it says localize. Now don't mess with localize, just mess with what is between the quotes. Now this, like the other ones, is calling to someplace else to get the label. But what we want to do is overwrite that. So we're just going to put in what we want to put in here, which will be A-S-S-E-T-S, -S -E right? We're going to press control S to save it. We're going to go back. We're going to press F5 to refresh. Then we're going to click on our character. We're going to control click. And guess what? It has changed to assets. That's exactly what we want to do there. So we're going to do our last one here. And this one is this is kind of the this probably is the one that we need more than anyone's i mean the other one too i mean you can survive without them right but this one here i mean this is eye strain in the making click on numenera and as you can see all this stuff is in white this is hard to read especially for your characters because not only will all this be in white but all this is will be in white for them now i'm under the gm screen but all of this will be white for them as well and that's just hard on the eyes folks so we want to change that so we want to go back to our Visual Studio, but this time we're going to open up a different file. That's just me and my OCD. Don't worry about that. We're going to open up a different file. So let's open a file and we're going to go backwards. Okay. Until we get to the Numenera folder. The one that we're going to open up this time is going to be Numenera CSS. So let's do that and there we go now this actually opens up to the place that i wanted to open up because i've been messing with it and it remembers where you were the last time very cool 
But right here, what you're going to be looking for is if you want to search for it, just put in cipher. We're going to put in cipher. And then we're going to put in a hyphen header. Oop, did I spell that right? Header. And then we're going to put another hyphen. We're going to put table. And we'll click on any one of these. Right? You can click on any one of them. But what you're going to want to find, this is the first one, this is the second one. What you want to go and look for is the one that has cipher header table. And then you also want to go and look for the ones that has artifact and oddity underneath as well. And the one that's kind of the giveaway is that it has a color in the attributes here, right? So these over here, these doesn't, they don't have color, right? No color. They just have the header. This one actually has the term color right here. And that is what we are looking for right now. It's white. What we want to do is we want to change that to black. So just double click on that and just put black in there. That's it. Now you can go down and you can click on black and change it or you can just press enter no matter what you want to do. Right. And once you do that, just go ahead and press control S. Go back to Foundry. Press F5 for the refresh. Click on your character sheets again. Let's look and see what happened. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. I can see. I can see. So, uh, <laughs> man, I don't know. I don't know why he put that in white. I really don't know why he put that in white. So that's it, folks. I told you this is going to be quick because it's very simple. Now, in our next video, we're going to go over some of the other things. We're going to change our dice like I did here and like I did like in my skills. I changed the dice over here, changed it for abilities, all of that stuff. We'll go over how to change the dice, how to customize it like that. We're also going to do kind of the, some of the simple things and where to find some of the cool icons for stuff like this over here for abilities and skills and stuff like that. And we're also going to see how to change some of the fonts. Maybe you want to change the font for your head heading here. You want it to have a a cooler looking font maybe something not so plain jane or maybe you want to change the font for these up here i'm going to tell you how to do that in the next video well there you have it folks how to customize your numenera system in foundry vtt for your campaign and that is just some of the bare bones basics that you need to do now next time or i might do another video in between not quite sure yet but when we get back to this series, we're going to go into more of the customizable things. So until next time, happy gaming.